and Pongkim, I'm your Kudmaki. Nowadays, having a big YouTuber or streamer play your game can be the massive difference between failure or success. It can get you tens of thousands of wishlists before release, or thousands upon thousands of sales after release. For example, Vampire Survivors launched without much recognition, but after Splattercat covered it in the video, it became a huge massive hit. Before that point, it had sold almost zero copies, and after that video, it started a massive snowball that eventually ended up with over 3 million copies sold. So in order to get your games covered by these streamers and YouTubers, in order to do that, it helps you learn how things work from the other side, meaning how do content creators actually find games to cover. And thankfully, some of these creators have posted some great info on exactly this topic, how they find new games to cover and how you can do some things in order to increase your odds of finding success. Now for me, since I usually don't have too much time to play many games, for that, the way that I usually keep up is by watching videos mainly from some variety of YouTubers, so mainly Splattercat, Wonderbots, and Orbiton Potato. I normally watch these videos on 2 or 3 XP, that's pretty much how I can keep up with all the tons and tons of awesome games that are coming out. And funnily enough, two of these actually covered my game, which was pretty surreal. So here's an interesting post by Wonderbots, talking about 8 separate methods where he finds new games to cover. Then there's another one which has a really awesome checklist for how to contact content creators. There's also a Game Discover Co. interview with Splattercat, and an interesting Twitter thread from Blitz, who is also another variety YouTuber. All of this is tons of super valuable info for us as developers in order to figure out how to best contact content creators, and it's actually no surprise how most of them say pretty much the exact same thing. For me, I know the importance that content creators have in today's market in order to find success at indie games. Marketing is really super important nowadays. If you want to find success, you need to do marketing. I made an entire video with a bunch of my knowledge on this topic. I frequently recommend the Game Discover Code newsletter, as well as the How to Market the Game newsletter. Both these are really awesome sources for indie game marketing, I highly recommend you read them. A few months ago, I released my ninth Steam game, Dinky Gardens, and I tried to apply all these tips myself, and thankfully I did get a bit of nice coverage. I was really happy to see a bunch of videos of people playing the game, and the game has since hit my goals for success. So how do you contact content creators? And the first really important thing to keep in mind is exactly what Blitz says over here. The first thing is to remember that it's our job to first entertain the viewers, second to pay our bills, and third to promote your game. So always remember to look at things from this point of view. The goal for these content creators is, like it says here, first to make an entertaining video, then to pay their own bills, and only thirdly, only a very distant third, is to actually promote your game. So make sure you do always remember that. The main purpose of all of these content creators is not to promote your game. That's pretty much just an accidental side effect of the fact that they need games to cover. So I'm looking here at this really nice list that has 8 methods. The main one is email. This is the one that is true for pretty much all content creators. It's the simplest, most straightforward thing, just send out an email to all kinds of people. However, there's also a big difference between a good email and a bad email, so there's this really nice checklist for how to contact, how to write a good email. So first of all, it should have an easy to parse email title. So either first the game or make some catchy 5 word hook. Again, remember to look at things from the point of view of these creators, they get tons and tons of emails, so definitely make sure that your email is super easy to parse and read. Then include some kind of release date, any kind of embargo information. Although, if you are a small solo indie game dev, I would probably not try going for an embargo. In most cases, that just adds needless complexity. Then the basic game info, so the genre, available platforms, price, and a quick summary. All super important is put a primary storefront link, probably a link to your Steam page. Then, if you do have a key, if the game is ready to play, if so, make sure you include that game key. Very importantly, do not make content creators jump through hoops in order to cover your game. So don't say, click over here in order to send me an email to request a key. So definitely don't do that, send them a key right away and hope that they cover it. And then of course, trailer, screenshots, or gameplay GIF. Then the usual press kit, including logos, key art, those are really important. A bunch of screenshots, some gameplay, characters, trailers, game assets, and gameplay GIFs. So this is a really useful checklist. If you follow this, your emails are going to be much better than the average person. For context, here is an example email that I sent out myself, where I obviously tried to follow all of these guidelines. So for title, I included Steam Key, because the email does contain a Steam Key. Then right away the name of the game and the genre of the game. So pretty much as short and to the point as I can make it. Then just include the short description for the game. I include the image over here, including the reviews, just so that they could see that the game is being well received. And then of course, importantly, right up top over here is the Steam Key. Both the Steam Key as well as a link directly to the Steam page. Then down here, a ton more links. So a link for the launch trailer, some behind the scenes devlogs, and then a bunch of logo assets. Importantly is how these are transparent PNGs. This is one thing that Splattercat mentions in his interview. So one big thing is to have a banger press kit with all the materials needed to make some great thumbnails. Now I can tell you from my perspective as a game dev YouTuber that thumbnails are indeed extremely important. Over here on YouTube, if the video is really great but nobody clicks on the thumbnail then it doesn't really matter. So making really great thumbnails is absolutely key. 
In order for these developers who cover games in order to make a good thumbnail, they need to have the enough assets in order to build a great compelling thumbnail. So that means that your game needs to be visually interesting, and your press kit needs to contain enough assets so that these creators can build some really awesome compelling thumbnails. If you want to see what makes an awesome compelling thumbnail, if so, you can just go and browse the video list. You can see all these videos and compare all the views between them. That is obviously going to be dependent on the game itself, the concept itself, but part of it on the concept and part of it also on the thumbnail use. And the way that they can make some awesome thumbnails is by you, the developer, giving them enough assets. So in your press kit, make sure you include as much assets as you can. Then over here for the rest of the email, I just include a bunch of GIFs. I include a more detailed description of what the game is all about, and in the end, again, reminding the link. Then on the email, just make sure it's short and quick. Don't include a massive wall of text talking about all your game, all the lore in the game and all that. Blitz points out the exact same thing, keeping it short and including a link and some visuals. And also don't clickbait, so pretty much what I was saying a while ago, if it says Steam Key Inside, make sure you do include the Steam Key Inside, so don't include some kind of dumb link to a Google form and force the creator to do some work on their end. Make it as easy as possible for them to redeem the key and start playing your game right away. Blitz posts an example email from the game Dome Keeper. This game is a massive mega hit, both in terms of sales and also in terms of getting creators to cover the game. Although once again, it all starts by having an excellent game to begin with. I would say this email is a little bit too simple in order to convert properly, but since the game was excellent, and I'm guessing by the point that this email came out, the game was already pretty popular, because of that, they can get away with just having a super simple email, just all the information and nothing else, just a simple link and that's it. So do keep in mind that pretty much everything that I'm saying here, everything in all of these checklists and all of this, this is all really just a multiplier that works on top of your game. If your game is great, then these will multiply your game and find massive success, but if your game isn't as good or isn't simply as compelling, if so, then all of these tips and tricks won't really do all that much. So anyways, that's how you craft a good email. But like we saw, email is really just the first method that these creators find games. Let's see the other ones. Then method number two and three are both all about demos, both the Steam demos page, as well as importantly, the Steam Next Fest. A lot of these creators make a ton of videos every time there's a Steam festival coming around. So that's yet another reason as to how these festivals are super valuable to you as an indie game developer. If your game does find traction on a Steam festival, if so, then these creators won't see your game even without having to see the emails. And also an interesting note over here, if you are a dev launching a demo on Steam, I highly recommend buffing up your branding. It's one of the best ways to stand out, especially against a crowd of games with extremely low effort art. Basically to say that the Steam capsule for your Steam game, that's basically the little image and the little icon for your game, make sure that one is always super high quality. So even if you are, for example, a programmer and all you can do is program art, I would still definitely encourage you in order to hire an artist at least to do just a capsule because that one does matter so much. Then method number four, here we have an interesting one, calendar sites. This is definitely much more of a niche thing. I do know there are some game calendars, but usually they're really only available to either AAA games or AAA indies. So if you're a small indie game dev, kind of like myself, usually these calendars are pretty much impossible to get onto. Then next one is just social media in general. Something that I've said many times is how Twitter is actually pretty bad in order to find players for your games. Usually if you post on Twitter, unless your game goes super viral, in most cases, chances are it's really only going to hit other developers. So it's really not a great place in order to find players. However, like it says here, it can be a great place in order to find content creators or potentially publishers. So if you can do it, if you have the bandwidth in order to post on Twitter or Reddit, if so, these can be useful specifically for the point of attracting content creators or publishers. However, don't expect to find success with players themselves. Next method is Discord, and specifically what he says here, Discord is the best way my audience suggests games to me. So as with so many things, peer recommendations are really important. So if your game has enough hype that the audience for these channels the audiences themselves are actually suggesting your game to play, that is a really great place to be, but of course that is really difficult to achieve. But if you can achieve, that is definitely one of the best ways to get these content creators to cover your game. Then method number seven, Steam new releases. So at this point I feel that this one is pretty much just the luck of the draw. Sometimes you might launch a game and for some reason you might get lucky and some content creator is too bored and doesn't have anything to cover, and they just browse it and they find your game. But I wouldn't really rely on this one in order to find success. And same thing for the other one, sales. So sales are a great way to give your game a little bit more coverage, give it a boost on the Steam algorithm in order to find more players for your game, and again, maybe you'll get lucky and some content creator won't see your game for the very first time and play it, but again, another thing that I would not rely on. So those are the eight methods, but over here you also asked all of his friends that also do the same thing on how do they find games. So Splattercat mostly finds games in his inbox, and also browses the Steam new releases, but importantly only when things are a little slow. Retromation uses Twitter, recommendation from friends, and watches the Steam new releases section. Then Yuri from IndieGems.com apparently uses the game dev and indie game tags on Twitter. Clemmy from Best Indie Games uses his email as well as the contact form. So as you can see, most of these find games roughly in the same ways. If you take the time to learn from these content creators and how they work, if you do that and you follow these guidelines, 
If so, then it's going to greatly help your chances of finding success. But at the same time, let me make two notes here. So first one is, like I said, all of these tips, these are really just multipliers that work on top of your game. So before all of this, the first thing you need to do is pick a good, compelling game, a compelling hook, a compelling, interesting thing to play. It all starts by that, and these tips are pretty much just multipliers working on top of that. And the second very important note is just make sure to not take it personally when things don't happen. So if you send out all these emails, you follow all these rules, but you still have no coverage. If so, then don't take it personal. Remember that these kind of creators, those are really just people. They're all just doing their job. So if they don't cover your game, that's really nothing personal. Perhaps it got lost in the thousands and thousands of emails that they get. Or perhaps there were tons of awesome games coming out at that exact time. Maybe they just don't think that it's going to make some kind of entertaining video. Or perhaps it simply does not feed their audience. Maybe it just won't make a clickable title and thumbnail. Or perhaps it's quite simply just not the type of game that they enjoy to play. Basically, there are many, many reasons why you might not get any coverage, even if you try doing absolutely everything right. So if you do get coverage, that's really awesome. But if you don't, then don't take it personally. So definitely do find these guidelines in order to increase your odds of finding success. But also remember to look at things from the point of view of these creators. Again, their first goal is to entertain the viewers. The second goal is to pay their own bills. And only thirdly, it is to promote your game. So I hope this info helps you find success with your own games. If you want to play my own game, you can check it out on Steam. It's a fun automation colony building defense game. Or if you want to learn all about C-Sharp, then check out my complete C-Sharp course. Alright, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.